I would say two years ago, I had no idea where my numbers were, like a lot of us in our network. But what really resonated with me was when I was meeting with my friends and family, on one side, I would be like, yeah, everything's great. Things are blowing the doors off everything. It's been great. But then deep down inside, I'm like, I have no idea if we're making money, if we're losing money. I felt like I was two people and that didn't sit well with me. As a business owner, sometimes we have to put on different faces. As an example, aside from say the profits and cash flow, you might have a job that's really going in the wrong direction, but you're meeting another client things are going well, you got to sometimes put on this face in front of the client, sometimes in front of the team to go like, I can't bring that into this conversation. Okay, so guys, uh, I got Ryan here today. And really, the reality is that I've got Ryan here because I want to give a last push as far as getting you guys to show up as best as you can to the workshop that's going to be happening on Thursday and Friday. Uh, we're going to be focusing on profits and cash flow. I think that's an important topic. It sure as hell better be an important topic for all of you champion CEOs. And I just want Ryan to share a little bit. He's going to be doing um, about what he's going to be touching on. Uh, is he's going to be doing a success spotlight. So he's going to be talking about where he was at and where he is now. And But what's most important is he's going to be talking about what got him to you know go from there to here, right? What were some of the roadblocks that held him back? So right now today, I just I just want you guys to get a grip on, um, you know, this is only one part out of many, and I'm going to touch on the agenda before we finish things up, but just one part of many that we're going to be covering off and bringing value to the table for you guys to take your profits and your cash flow and your, your business to that next level on the contractor's hour of success. So Ryan, enough of me yapping. So tell us, you know, a little bit about your company. Tell us a little bit about like where are you located? What kind of work do you do? And then let's get into some of these things that, you know, as far as the right. path present. Yeah, sure. We teach instructions uh, based out of Fenwick, Ontario, which is kind of the central point of Southern Ontario mm -hmm. between like Ontario and Lake Erie. And uh, we're a general contracting company. Awesome. So what, like, what would be some of the, you know, what's your sweet spot of, you know, types of work that you do? Uh, main floor renovations. Uh, another would be small additions. But we don't do new builds or anything yet. Might be something in the future as long as the numbers. Yeah, nice. Well said, my man. What a good segue. So when you say, you know, as long as the numbers work, let's talk about, you know, if we look at where you were at, just some of the you know, couple of key things that you'd want to share or that you're going to be talking to. Um, what what was a bit of the, re and how long have you been with PFC? Uh, this is our second year. PFC. Okay. Awesome. Congratulations with that. Awesome. So let's talk about like going back in time. Like w what are a couple of things that you want to share as far as like where were things at back, you know, specific to the profits and cash flow side of things when you came in here? Yeah. Like I would say two years ago, I had no idea where my numbers were like a lot of us on in our network. But what really resonated with me was when I was meeting with my my friends and family, on one side, I would be like, yeah, everything's great. You know, uh, things are, we're, we're blowing the doors off everything. It's been great. But then deep down inside in my, my head, I'm like, I have no idea if we're making money, if we're losing money. So like, I felt like I was two people and that didn't sit well with me. You know, let's just be straight up. It wasn't because it sounds like a stupid thing to say, but it wasn't because that was something that you wanted or a choice that you chose. What do you, yeah. you know what I mean by that? Yeah, I, I certainly didn't choose to uh, not like not know kind of where the funds are. Right. On. I wanted it right. to be, you know, well organized and good. And you kind of go from there. Yeah. Yeah. Well, let's face it, right? Like as a business owner, sometimes we have to put on, uh, you know, different faces, right? We have to, you know, something might be going really, as an example, you know, aside from say the profits and cash flow, you might have a job that's really going in the wrong direction, but you're meeting another client, things are going well. You got to sometimes put on this face in front of the client, sometimes in front of the team to go like, I can't bring that into this conversation, right? But with that being said, 
Over 90% of the contractors that come here at Proffer Contractors, they don't know, they don't know their numbers. They don't know how to read their numbers. Okay. And so they're not alone. You're not alone. So what, like, what was some of the things that, that must've stressed you out, right? It was a very stressful time, sleepless nights, um, thinking like, what am I, what am I doing? Uh, I've got a lot of responsibilities tied up mm -hmm. with, uh, like out of stress and anxiety, yeah. trying to keep that, the happy face and then in result of that stress and anxiety, you become the, the husband you don't want to be, the dad you don't want to be. You become the boss you don't want to be. In what way? Like, like what, what would be some of the behaviors or things that, that, that makes you say that? Like I would find myself just being uh, short tempered, not, not necessarily short tempered, but like just like just on edge. Right. right. And, um, you know, all the time. You, yeah. And you want to be present with your family at the end of the day, you know, in a perfect world, we can shut her down spend time with our wife and kids or, or whoever we spend our time with after work. And, uh, just having that, uh, be able to be present and not being able to be present because of the anxiety and stress. Uh, that was a challenging, a challenging period of my life for sure. That's tough, man. You're behaving in a way that you know you don't want to behave, but the stress sometimes just gets to us, right? And then, you know, you, you put on a good front and it's almost like, I don't know if it's like Superman and Kryptonite, but let's just use that as an example. Like you can put on a good face up to a certain point. And then after a certain period of time, you know, like crypt Kryptonite wears you down and then you don't have that, you know, you don't have that, I don't know if you want to call it strength, to behave in the way that you want. And then, you know, you get worn out, you get stressed out, you get tired. And then moments happen that you don't want to happen as far as how you respond. And it's, it's, it's all part of psychology, but I mean, it sounds like you experienced some of those things, right? Where something, something would happen, you'd have a conversation with somebody and you'd, you'd walk away and go, yeah. So you could have did that better. <laughs> right. Right. You know, and, and it impacts our team and it gets brought back to our family, right? You talked about not just your employees, you talked about family as well, right? Yeah. So let's just touch a bit on like, what were some of the symptoms in the sense of, was the bank account a symptom? In other words, it was like, you didn't know when it was up or when it was down or what was actually going on. Like, what were some of the symptoms of that? Or, you know, not knowing if you're pricing jobs properly or like, what was some of the symptoms? So a symptom would be like, we would have some money in the bank and I wouldn't know if I could spend it. I would ask, you know, I wouldn't know if uh, I had to save that money or right. if I could spend it. Right. right. So, um, felt like, and then when EP came along, I was like, oh, do I have enough money in there? Don't I have enough money in there? Am I getting paid this week? Like, it's like, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Or like that. And you add all that into just your daily life as a construction uh, company on top of trying to lead your team, manage jobs, yeah, right, quote jobs, like you know, and then on the pricing side, did, like not knowing your numbers was did that carry into like your mental stress around like, am I quoting this right? Am I pricing this right? Am I? Yeah, yeah, and it's hard to forecast and, and plan your business when when I did I had no I, I didn't really have a good grasp on it, right, and um and that was stressful, uh, mm -hmm. just, like imagine like all these people in your company, whether it's you and one person or you and yourself or you and 25 people, they're looking up to you to lead them. Mm -hmm. And you need to, you know, make as best, most informed decisions as you can. And if you don't have that information, uh, that's not a, you know, like for me, it was, I was like driving a race car without a steering wheel. <laughs> wow. Well said. You know, I used the analogy back in the day. It's a long time ago since I thought of this analogy. You know, if you look at your business as a vehicle, right, we want to be in the driver's seat with the steering wheel, knowing where we're going, right? Knowing that we got the right dashboard, you know, to know if we're, you know, going at a, at a reasonable, safe speed, you know, knowing that we got enough in the gas tank, you know, being excited about where we're going versus in the back seat, feeling like somebody else is driving us and we don't even know where the fuck we're going. Yeah. Or worse, on the, in the freaking trunk, getting, thrown around, bashed around. I mean, we really want to be in that driver's seat, but like, unless we know our numbers, that's one of the, that's one of the core principles, not the only one, but for this workshop, 
knowing your financials is one of the core principles to keep you in the in the driver's seat from a financial perspective. Right? Sure. Yeah. So, and it hurts, right? You get bruised. Absolutely. We don't talk about this enough, but I think that some of the pain points that we go through creates a bit of PTSD. Oh, sure. Yeah. You know? Like, it sure does. Yeah, because yeah. it's not like we're going through some of these pains for a week or a day. Like that, some of the stuff, and how long did you... How long did you have this business where you didn't know your numbers? Three and a half years. Yeah, I'd say there's some PTSD that, that's, you know, come into there from the, you know, uh, yep. repercussions, right? So let's yep. talk about, you know, uh, you know, at the workshop, we're going to talk about the strategies and we're going to talk about that, you know, like we're going to touch on a bit of that reality again. You know, we're going to touch on, you know, what were the roadblocks that held you back and the strategies that allowed you to move forward. But touch on like, What's the in? What would be the flip of those things you just covered off as far as where you're at today? What does it look like today? What does it look like today? So when I'm having a conversation with my family and friends, or or my banker or my accountant, it's the complete opposite of that of the opposite side of like being those two people. Now it's mm-hmm. I know exactly where I am, and it's on the positive side, <laughs> which is amazing, um, and to see that turnaround for me over the last couple of years has been um, just a growing and and just an amazing time. And and like, you can just feel like the armor that you wear when you don't know, just peel off. So now it's like, I like, I have nothing to hide. I'm mm. totally, totally free from that. Right. Just knowing. And then now I can make calculated things that we'll talk about uh, this coming week. Right. Yeah, totally. Yeah, for sure. So like it it sounds so it sounds like you know your numbers, right? Okay. It sounds like you're now able to make decisions to move the business forward in a profitable and cash flow positive way. Correct? Okay. Yeah. You're so, able to be more present with your family. I'm just like playing back what I'm yeah. hearing. Okay. Yeah. Um, and there's a lot of strategies that you're going to share as far as, you know, what you put into place and what you're keeping back to reflect, protect for and touch on that at the workshop. Uh, what's the stuff you got to protect, you know, and you're diligent in protecting. Now, I guess the last thing is like, has it changed your excitement for the business? Like, where are you at from that perspective? How you feel about the business now? Yeah, it's, it's, it is. It's a lot less. When things are less stressful, you can be more excited. You've had the mental capacity to be excited. Uh, when you're not always uh, pushing through, like you're cutting the field, blazing the path, but like now it's it you feel that release. It's 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 an amazing feeling to to be able to now forecast and and to say you know where do I see myself in the future, and by knowing like by working through uh, the steps that we worked through, and now I don't have to rod for Peter to pay for. Mm. That's definitely a great feeling to have, just the ability to know where you're going or. Or to be able to plan things awesome. in the future. Awesome, man. So guys, like seriously, I'm going to talk about the agenda here in just a second. And then we'll wrap, we're going to wrap this up. But do your best to block off the time on Thursday and mm-hmm. Friday. Okay. We've got this workshop hap- happening. It's not for me. Okay. It's for you. It's, you know, just be clear. It's, it's Thursday and Friday. It's, you know, 11 o'clock to four uh, on both days. And I want you to, I want you to really think about this for a second. It sounds really simple what I'm about to say, but I I want it. I want to make sure you're you're looking at this workshop for from the right set of lenses. Okay, you're an owner of a contracting company, like you're the owner. Okay, Uh, a business owner trying to become a champion CEO. That's going from like yeah, I own a business to like now I'm actually going to lead this business. It's your responsibility. And I'm putting some pressure on you because that's part of my job as your coach right now. To be accountable to yourself and to your team that our job, one of our jobs, and there's lots of jobs, okay? And that's no bullshit, okay? We have to wear more than one hat being the champion CEO, okay? It's just, it's just, wait, we don't own Google. We don't have fucking own Apple. You know, we don't have, you know, you know, 10,000 people, everybody doing their own specific little thing. There's multiple hats that we wear. And that means we have lots of different levels of responsibility. One of the things that we have responsibility for is leveraging this principle, which is the principle of going from decades to days in your learning. 
So it doesn't necessarily mean it has to be decades, but in Ryan's case, he spent years struggling, okay? Some of you guys have been in business for, for 10, 20 years, okay? With the same fucking struggles. One of the best principles that the champion CEO does is he learns from others versus learning solely from his own mistakes. Ryan, does that resonate with you? Oh, yeah, totally. Having the group to lean on and, and talk to has right. been a game changer. Yeah. Right. Okay. So like Ryan, from that perspective, why do you think that like, what would you have to say before we wrap this up? Again, I'm going to touch on the agenda, but what would you have to say before we wrap it up to get people to go, you know, because really at the end of the day, it's a choice between what you see as value, right? Like people make choices. Honestly, one of the biggest principles, other principles is that people make choices based upon value. So if they don't show up to a coaching session or they don't show up to a workshop or they don't show up to certain things at work or whatever, it's because they're choosing something else that they think is more valuable. Okay. So, so what would be some of the reasons from a value perspective and piggybacking off of me, what I said or beyond that they should block off this time and show up to this workshop? I can speak from experience on any time you miss um, a coaching thing or, or you have your uh, PFC um, online events, the, anytime you miss it, you can actually see, I've been able to see the, the slowdown of the process, uh, not, not keeping the wheels going. And like, I think of the analogy of a train, a train will blow through, if it's moving, it'll go through a, a brick wall without a problem, but you put a little wheel chalk on it when it stopped and it won't roll. So, uh, the, you know, the, you don't, don't let that fire slow down or don't let that mm. slow down because it's hard to get it going again. So right. which I'm, we all know, yeah. So just take that time and, and, and invest in the train. Right. And so like every 90 days in this case, you know, I've seen you in the last couple of workshops. It not only keeps that momentum going, it fuels it and even amplifies it even more. Right. Cause if you just yeah. even get two or three golden nuggets out of this event to improve your profits and cash flow. It's the, these things are going to be for the life of your business, right? I love what you just said there. You know, I love that from a champion seal perspective that you have actually recognized that when you don't show up to these things, it actually impacts your momentum and progress. A hundred percent. Yeah, it does. Wow. I can see it in my team too. Cause we, our team go into the momentums weekly mm -hmm. and, uh, that we all had our management meeting. We have those discussions. Yep. Huge. Wow. Great share. Great share. Okay. So guys, you know, show up to the event. A couple of things we're going to do. We're going to be, you know, going through how you guys can use your profit and loss statement, uh, where just small little changes can have massive gains. Okay. We're going to talk about business core elements. You know, the, the core things you need to make sure you focus in on uh, with your business everything from the cadence of communication around your financials. Like we're going to be handing you guys things that you can take and bring to your business, right? Like actually done for you calendar of like, here's the cadence of communication regarding financials, profit and loss, cash flow. So you guys can just take this thing like, you know, man, it's done. I'm just going to put it in my calendar, okay? Or delegate it to your admin or whatever. Uh, we're going to be doing breakout rooms, lots of sharing, okay, which is, you know, that's tremendous value, okay, back to decades of the days. We're going to talk about, you know, how to get your profits clearly in order and some of the core strategies to do that, that work. We're going to have, the, you know, a spotlight with Ryan here and Theo, so much more, okay, that we're going to be bringing to the table. Um, this is a huge one. This is, this is a big one, okay? So do your best to show up to it. And uh, like Ryan says, there's lots of reasons. And one of the biggest ones is, is to keep that momentum happening. Uh, bring your team members, okay? Bring your admin, bring your bookkeeper, anybody that's involved in the financial side of things, um, I would highly advise you, you bring them, okay? Doesn't cost you anything. And if you know any other contractors, guys, that, um, you know, that you, you know, meet on the job site, you know, that are in some form of chaos, I'm sure, Ryan, you come across guys who are like, man, you know, I'm not making the money or you see them in chaos. I mean, guys, we have a duty, in my opinion, a responsibility to at least give people the opportunity to know that there's a different way to do it. So, you know, you're more than welcome to bring them as a guest if you want. Uh, we have to limit it, but, you know, uh, feel free, free to bring a guest. And that's it, guys. So show up, be present, block it off in your calendar. 
do the best you can to attend it and participate. And I'll see you guys on the flip side and we'll see you there. All right. Thanks, Ryan. Thanks, brother. I can't wait for you to share all your insights. And uh, awesome, man. Thanks a lot. Cheers. Hey, rock stars. Thank you for watching the No Bullshit Podcast for Contractors. If you enjoyed this episode, hit the subscribe button. And if you're serious about growing and need help, click on the link below. Myself and my team would love to help and give you the necessary tools so you can take your contracting business to the next level. And remember, dominate, delegate, and deliver.